Well, praise the Lord. Here we are again. Really, really, really great to be here today with you and uh, just so, so excited about the Word of God. The Word of God is a really amazing book. It is alive. It is powerful. It is very, very real. The, the more you get into it, the more you sort of glean from it. And, uh, and, and it's so exciting today to know that that everything God has given us that pertains to life and to godliness. He's, this is the greatest how-to book that you'll ever, ever read. It'll tell you how to be successful. It'll tell you how to have an amazing marriage. It'll tell you how to have a, have a great walk on this planet. It'll tell you how to win. It'll tell you how to be victorious. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just so excited by the men uh, that were inspired by the Holy Spirit to write this book. People that were really touched by, by something so dynamic and so powerful that there's something inside of me, there's a hunger, there's a, there's a thirsting, there's a passion to find this, this, this way that God has made for us that, that we go into the supernatural, that we can make statements that are so bold and so full of authority and full of power that, that when they're spoken, they, they carry the mantle, they carry the anointing of God and, and bring great conviction upon us and, and uh, touch people and change people, transform us. And uh, that is the amazing thing. You know, uh, the Word of God, Paul, he, he said this, he said in uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. What, what an amazing statement. Here's a man, a, a, just a natural man, but, but he's so ha been impacted by the power of God, by the anointing of God, by, by, by just God himself, that, that now... He makes a statement. A man that, that had a lot of power in the natural, a man that, that, was, that was a great achiever in the natural, but now he makes a statement, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Oh, what an amazing statement. Christ in me, the hope of glory. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set, set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. And then after that impacting statement, he follows it up with, O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. Just an amazing statement. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Or are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Oh, what a, that that's just blows me away. It really blows me away. You know, friend, today I believe that God's looking for faith. He says, when I return, will I find faith on the planet? You know, we can uh, clothe faith in so many things and, and have it, you know, there. But faith really is simply trusting and believing what God has said in this word. And whatever he says, you see, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent, has he not said it, will he also not bring it to pass? And faith is simply somewhere or other breaking out of a natural realm into another realm where we believe what God says. What God says about me, what God says I can have, what God says I can do, well, that is truth. And so somehow or other, I now navigate my life through negativity, my own lack my own ability, my own strength, which is but nothing. And somehow other transferring that over to receive what God says by faith and allow his work to work through me. Romans 10, 17 says that, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And, you know, as we are preachers, we're, we're so conscious because you see, we, we have a congregation of people and, and they come and listen to us. And, and, you know, one man said a long time ago, he said, 
Oh, Neil's still saying the same things that he said years ago. At least I am consistent. And, uh, but, but it's very, very real. And, and so faith comes by hearing. And so we've got a congregation of people. So there's a lot of things that, that we springboard from because words and, and scriptures that have impacted my life, that have challenged me, the, those words are so real to me. And, and so I, I don't want to work out of a doctrine or a philosophy. I want to work from a reality, something that's very, very real in me. Uh, Ephesians, we know Ephesians only too well, and, and, and this is, uh, I've told you many times that this is a, verses that have really, really challenged me. Ephesians chapter 1, uh, Paul is speaking to the church in Ephesus, and it says in verse 13, it says, In him you also trusted after you heard the word of faith, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having received, believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. See, they heard the word, the gospel, they heard the truth. They heard the truth and they received it gladly. And, and, and it came into their lives. But then in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15, it goes on and says, Therefore, after I also heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers. Now, what Paul is saying here, it's really saying is, I want you to realize I have found something. I, I, I have found a hidden truth. And I want this hidden truth to be revealed to you. So I pray for you daily that God would do something in the realm of the Spirit. He would open up things. And this is what he prayed. He said, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all the earth. So here is, uh, is speaking to these people now, and he's trying to encourage them. You see, they had a knowledge of their salvation, but they did not understand their inheritance. They did not have an understanding of their inheritance, what God had really done. And you see, as a Christian, we can live in, in, a, in a state so far below where God really wants us to live. And the only way we can come through that is by revelation and by understanding. Only the spirit of revelation can reveal all that the Lord has made available to us. I want you to, let me just say it again. Paul, you know, he was there and he said, it's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. This man had an amazing revelation of God. And, and he wanted to impart that revelation. He, wanted, he, he just didn't want these Christians, these people now, okay, they're saved and they're on their way to heaven. But God, he knew that there was more that, they, that God wanted to do, that they had a great inheritance. So let's pray today. Father, Lord, help us to understand your ways. Help us to walk in the Spirit and not moved by or hindered by what we see. Help us to see and set our minds on the things of the Spirit. Help us, Father, to see you in all your glory and, and catch a glimpse today, my God, of, of this great, great victory that you won for us. Help us, my God, to walk above and not beneath. Help us to set our eyes on the things that are, that are spiritual, my God, and that we might grow and develop in you. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory. God has got so much more that he wants to reveal to us. 
I believe that we've only scratched the surface regarding the, the victory of the cross of Calvary. The cross of our Christ. I believe that there's more. There's so much more that, that God wants to reveal to us. And that's really what Paul was doing. He wasn't trying to say, look, I'm better or smarter or, or this or that about you. But, but you now have come into an experience of salvation. You know that. But I really want God now to open your eyes, understand the inheritance, the victory, what God has done so you can live in that victory. You see, today, so many Christians live defeated lives. And it's not a really good testimony. God wants us to live in that victory. We've only scratched the surface regarding the victory of the cross of our Christ. What God did to Satan when he raised Jesus from the dead. I, I can, you know, Satan and they would have all been watching as Jesus was hanging on that cross. And, and you know, every word that Jesus spoke were not just idle words. But those words that Jesus spoke carried they carried the, the authority. They carried the power. They, they were life-bringing and, and they were challenging and, and, the, and, and it carried so much more. And as he was hanging upon that cross and as he uttered these words with a loud voice, it is finished. Man, those words would have cut through Satan, would have just entered into him. It would have just oh, caused him to have a hernia on the spot would have caused him just to... Yeah, because those words were living, alive. What God did to Satan when he raised him from the get, dead and cried out those words, it is finished. The power that God invested in that precious, precious, precious blood of our Lord and Savior. The blood will never lose its power. It will never lose its power for it reaches the highest mountains and it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never, ever, ever lose its power. Amen. We've only scratched the surface the, and, and God is wanting to reveal the power of the mighty Holy Spirit that surges through our body. It's not just something there, not a doctrine or a philosophy. It's a reality. Something came from heaven into our lives and now flows and surges through our mortal bodies. There was a man who said, I, 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 there's one coming after me. I'm not even worthy to tie up his sandals. A man by the name of John. He said, but when he comes, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Man, there's fire that wants to surge through us. We've only scratched the surface on the life that God has in the Word. This Word that is alive, that is powerful, it is sharper than any two-edged sword. My God, this Bible carries the words of life. It carries the words of victory. It carries the anointing of God. I want to tell you when that Bible, when those words activate and touch something on the inside of you, you and I will be changed forever and ever. Sharper than any two-edged sword. I want you to have a look at, with me in the book of Romans because I, I believe that God today, I, I really am excited about this because you see, we are called to walk by faith and our faith walk is a walk in the realm of the Spirit. To walk and have spirit revelation and spirit understanding. You know, when the Spirit of God comes, it will challenge your natural thinking. It will challenge everything most surely that around you. It might even challenge your doctrinal belief. It might even, some of the sacred cows that you've held so dear. I, I remember a man, and, and he was there, and, and Peter... And God spoke to him and, and a sheet came down and it had different things, a uh, most surely mud crab and a couple of pork chops, goodness knows what. And, and Jesus said, Peter, go kill and eat. And Peter said, hang on, I've never done that. I have never done that and I don't intend to even start. But you see, he had a revelation because he, he, was on, he was in a trance and the Spirit of God spoke to him and it had to cut across some of the sacred cows. And, and you know, when the Spirit of God moves, that's what will happen to us. 
It will challenge some of our belief systems. And it says, this is what it says in Romans 8. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, He condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who walk according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Father, th those words are so powerful and, and so impacting. You see, we, we can study the Scriptures, and sometimes when we study the Scriptures, uh, all we get is, is knowledge. We can't just study the Scripture for knowledge only. I know the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And I know that's very, very true, but we just can't be going after knowledge. But we need to start to cry out to God for understanding. God, help me to understand what you're saying. Help me to understand. You see, without the spirit revelation, everything about us, our natural mind, all, all of us, you know, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled. We've got to set our minds on the things of the Spirit. Knowledge only will result in theory or religion. Understanding will result in revelation life. Revelation life, freedom. Romans 8, we need to read 1 to 17 uh, uh, quite often. Read it, read it right through. Romans 8, 1 through to 17, uh, 17 there. We know a lot of theory. God wants to open the eyes of our understanding. We've got to be able to identify with Christ. We've got to be able to identify with who He is. Most Christians today would say this, we know that we are in Christ. We know that He dwells in us. We know the authority that He has invested in His name. We know we have His ability. We know we have His wisdom. We know we have His love. We know we are His righteousness. We know that we have an open invitation to His throne room. We, we know we are invited to come into His presence. We know that we are seated in heaven. We know that He's with us on earth. But do we believe it in theory only or are we experiencing it? You see, it's more than just having knowledge. Colossians 2. Have a look with me in the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, it says, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Then it says this, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. 
For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. I had the privilege just recently of, of going out to a, uh, to a nursery. And a gentleman by the name of uh, Mick, he owns a property there. And, and he took me around and started to show me uh, his nursery. And uh, I was just blown away because it was, seemed like as if there was just hundreds of thousands of plants. All these baby plants, all in different stages, all, all being nurtured, all being cared for, all being established. He said some things to me that, that sort of I, I, I put aside for a little bit. He said, you know, he said, with our, with our plants, he said, we like to put them out after a little period of time and get them used to the sun. So that when people purchase them and take them home, that they don't die on them. See, he had to establish something. He had to get them used to something. He had to get them there. But, but one of the things that really amazed me was when we were walking through there, he had all these little baby plants. All, and somehow or other, they take the wood from a tree and, and uh, then they, they put it in the ground and, and uh, they look after it and so forth and they, they want it to take root. They want it to start to take root because when they put it in, there's no roots on it. Anyhow, he, he walks over to this little thing and he starts there and he starts... Pulling them up. Very gently, but it pulled them up. No roots. Made a little hole, put it back in again. See, he was looking for roots. And until that little plant, until that little plant can take, put roots out and start to draw, start to, to take in the nutrients, start to take in the, everything it needs to grow into that massive tree. And, and I've seen some of the photographs of the trees, the flowers, the beauty, the, that all that was contained in there. But you see, if that little thing that was sitting in that little pot, whatever it was in, didn't take root, it would wither and die. And you see, it's, it goes here, it says, don't, don't, don't let anyone cheat you through philosophies. See, we, we as Christians have got to take root. We've got to, we've got to somehow or other get hold of the word. We've got to, got to drink it in. We've got to, we've got to allow, allow it to touch us and allow it to develop us so we become strong, so, so we become established. You see, what he was wanting to do, he was wanting to establish those plants in such a way that when people took them home and planted them out, that they would survive. And that's what Jesus wants to do in your life. He doesn't want you to wither and die. He doesn't want you to be like the foolish Galatians. He doesn't want us to be people there that, that are led astray by every wind of doctrine, tossed to and fro. There are people today, they don't know what they're believing. There's so many doctrines and philosophies and, and things like that, that that are hindering the move of God. But God wants you to be established in the faith. He wants your roots to go down. He wants to establish us. And that is an amazing thing. The truth is, is this, that who we are in Christ. I, I love Paul. I, I love the, the words of God. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live, I don't live by flesh. I live by faith. I live by the Spirit. I live by the power of God. I live by the anointing. I live by the Word of God. What the Word of God says is yea and amen. Let me say it again. God is not a man that he should lie. He is not a trickster. He is not. But there's a deceiver that's out there that will come to try to deceive you if he can and lead you astray and take you into, into death. Jesus wants to take you into life. You see... When you're rooted up in that, the Word of God, and the Word of God gets in you, just like the ones of old that wrote this book. Now, I know it was written by the Holy Spirit, but these men all had experiences. Women had experiences with God. That they could write and God could use it. We've got to understand that, that when this builds in you, you start to speak differently. You start to act differently. You're not like that reed that's being tossed to and fro. You're not running here and there. You're not running after this or that. But you're running after God. You're running after the things of God. We start to speak differently. Instead of sin, weakness and failure conscious, so many people today are failure conscious. 
weak. Instead of being that conscious, we become conscious of our righteousness in Christ. When these things, when these truths take root in us, we will speak different, we will act different, we won't be religious, but we will be very, very real. Amazing transformation. I know I sp say it a lot because, you see, there are some things that, that amaze me. Because, you, you see, I knew Neil before he got saved. Nancy knew Neil before he got saved. Some of my friends and mates, football team and other things, they knew Neil before he got saved. One of my best mates, I won't mention his name, but he was so blown away, he was worried because Neil got religion, but what he didn't understand was I got reality. You see, I knew Neil before he got saved. And I knew the weakness of his flesh. And I knew the, the, the battles that he faced and the trials and the temptations and everything that went on. But you see, I also know the Neil that got born again. I know the Neil that got saved and gloriously filled with the power of God. And something happened in my life now, instead of being failure mentality, instead of being weak, now the Spirit of God comes in and starts to change your life. And you go from one place to another. You go from death to life. You go from weakness to strength. Uh, the amazing transformation when we got born again, delivered out of and brought into. You see, we became a new creation. It wasn't the old Neil just getting dressed up in now in church clothes. It wasn't just the old man now walking down all dressed up with a Bible under his arm and, and goodness knows what singing hallelujah. No, you see, there was a transformation that took place. And that transformation that took place, when I came in contact with my old mates, they could see that there was a difference. They could see that this old fella was no longer there, but now there was a whole brand new creation, a brand new man. we become a brand new person with the ability to rule and reign in life, this life with our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus triumphed over Satan. It's not a doctrine, friend. It's a reality. It's not a doctrine. It's a reality. He can come into your life. I believe that this, that was the greatest battle that was ever, ever fought. Greater than any other battle. Greater than anything else that could ever rage on this planet. Greater than any of the World War I, World War II, Korean, Vietnam, or anything else greater than the coronavirus, greater than anything else. This battle was the greatest battle ever fought, bigger than anything else. Jesus conquered the hosts of hell. He did it for you. He didn't do it for himself. And, and like in God's mind, it was like as if I won the battle. Today, that's why I can say I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Jesus won a battle, an amazing battle. Oh, friends, it's so exciting. I, I love to think that those words, it's no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me. Satan had deceived Eve. Jesus won the battle. He triumphed over the devil. Amen. He now wears the victor's crown. Friend, today... I, I just pray, I, I know I've stuttered and stammered a little bit because sometimes my, my spirit man goes faster than my natural man. I can't catch up with it. But all I know is the reality of a Savior. The reality of the power of the Holy Spirit that took this brokenness that was in my life. It took the brokenness being broken, smashed, hurt. The disappointments, sadness that consumes you. The, the anger that gets inside you. I used to be so angry. Angry, angry, angry. I would want to smash things. Kick things. Before I got saved, I was so angry. 
I was in the kitchen with my wife and we were having an argument. I was so angry, so, so angry, that I kicked at the kitchen cupboard door with my foot, barefoot. I kicked the kitchen cupboard door right off its hinges. Ten minutes later, Nancy finds me in the bathroom running cold water over my foot. She said, what is going on? I said, I think I broke my foot, <laughs> which I had done. I went to the doctor with my foot. And I'm, in those days, I'm talking about a long time ago, he had me underneath the banana tree to put the cast on my foot. And as I was there, his wife lived, they lived in the house next door to their surgery. And she came over and she said, uh, what are you doing here? And I said, oh, I said, I've broken my foot. She said, how did you do that? I said, I got so angry, so stupid, so angry that I kicked the kitchen cupboard door off and I broke my foot. Oh, she said, oh, I don't do that. She said, I throw eggs. <laughs> I throw eggs. She said, it's a lot easier to clean up. But anyhow, the doctor came out after a while. He said, oh, look, he said, we're not going to put a cast on you. Just put on a good tight shoe. Just put on a good tight shoe and that should hold everything together and you'll be okay in a few weeks. The only thing he didn't tell me was I should take the shoe off when I went to bed because all night I kicked Nancy with that shoe. <laughs> but anyhow, that's another story. You see, I knew the anger that was in me. I smashed things. I, 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 would, I would tear things up. I, I would... But you see, I needed that power of God to set me free. I know I'm a new creation. I know I'm a brand new man. I know I'm... I'd love to be able to say to you today, I'm perfect, but I'm not. I'm not perfect, but I am certainly a lot better than I used to be. I'm a lot different than I used to be. And I'm learning, and I'm learning, and I'm learning every day. I want to encourage you today, put your trust in Him. Put your trust in Jesus. If you've never done it before, and you might be identifying with some of the things... Don't identify with my badness, my anger and that. Identify with Jesus Christ who loved you so much that he gave himself for you. you we can say that. They say to me today that they've done a survey in America with, in, with religious leaders and a vast majority of religious men and women that are preaching the gospel no longer believe in the virgin birth. No, no longer believe that Jesus raised from the dead. We certainly know they don't believe in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There's so much that have been stolen. There's so much more that God wants to restore. I pray that, that today that, that you would let the King of glory come in. Let his presence fill your life. Get, let him get around you. Ask him, hey God, would you come in? Would you save a wretch like me? Would you save me? He will. He will. If he saved me, he'll save you. All you've got to do is say, Jesus, would you come into my life? Would you forgive me all of my sins, all of my shortcomings, all of my failures? And Lord, today, I don't want to stay like that. I don't want to be like that. Even in all my anger, all those times, I never wanted to be like that. But there was something inside me that drove me. But now I've got something greater inside me that drives me drives me in a different direction. I can meet with God. I can hear from God. He's not talking to me all the time, 24-7, but he does speak to me. Touches my heart, speaks to my heart. Let him come into your life today. Let, this, let the presence of God get around you today. Ask him to come in. Father, I ask you today that you touch people. Touch them by your spirit. Help them, Father, to, to just... Uh, Come in your own special way. Help them, Father, as they receive you today in their own way and that you will reveal yourself to them and we'll give you all the praise. We thank you for Paul's prayer. Thank you, Father. Open the eyes of our understanding. We might know our inheritance in Jesus' name. Father, today, if there are need, people that need that healing touch, need your presence. Father, just touch them today. Thank you for Levi for the testimony of that mighty power surging through his body, driving out every bit of that arthritis, 
every bit of that pain. I thank you for the testimony now of what you're already doing in him. I thank you for others, my God, that you're moving by your spirit, touching their lives. Lord, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you all the honor. And for that, my God, we say thank you. Thank you, amen. Well, God bless you today. I pray that uh, I don't know how soon or how long it's going to take to get uh, Greg and Joanne back, but I know that they're excited still about the things of God. They're still passionate about Australia. They're still passionate about being part of Global Connections here. And, uh, and uh, Greg and Joanne, we just want you to come quickly. We love you guys. We appreciate you. And we thank you for your input into this uh, group of people. We thank you, Father, for them. And uh, we ask you just to continue blessing them. And Father, would you make a way for their return in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Bless you today.